Lead the Way, a podcast for school leaders with author, speaker, and educator, Dr. Bill Ziegler. I'm thrilled to be here with Jessica Cabine, a Minnesota National Distinguished Principal. Jessica, it's great to have you on Lead the Way. Bill, thank you so much. Incredible honor that I'm literally standing right next to you. Like, you're real. I'm like, I'm, there it is. Yeah, you're real. So thank you for this honor. Awesome. And tell us a little bit about your school and where you're at. Great. Well, I am a principal in Austin, Minnesota, and I have the joy and blessing of leading a kindergarten center. This will be the start of my sixth year there. And the Woodson Kindergarten Center has 365-year-olds. So my campus is just all early learning, and it's just been a humbling experience to be able to lead such joy and wonder and excitement, especially coming from the secondary. I'm a recovering assistant middle school principal, mm. and so that transition the first year was, was quite challenging, but it was wonderful for me to learn how to build culture and relationships and then move us forward into high academic expectations and innovation in the last few years. Awesome. Tell us how you did that. How'd you move them into high expectations and student-centered culture? How'd you do that? We have a mantra of all means all. So we've had committed PLCs that created essential learning outcomes in math and reading, and we have weekly PLC meetings where we're sitting and talking about those outcomes. We build trust and relationships as a PBIS school, and we continue to bring in book talks and book studies and people to really help hone in on who we are and what we want to do. And then as a leader, I have to show the way and go the way. And sometimes that means I'm putting myself out there and doing crazy stuff and making mistakes so then they feel like, well, if she's making mistakes and trying again, so can I. So one of the biggest things that I've done in the past few years is I teach a coding club. And so Mm. I pull kids from across our building, across demographics, and I definitely emphasize female students over male students. And I teach once a week, and I teach robot, Sphero, Bebot, Code.org. And the teachers come in and observe me, and their pedagogy is incredible compared to mine. I haven't been teaching classes for over a decade. And so they'll come in there like, okay, now this technology doesn't scare me as much because I see what she does and I could do it better because I know a better gradual release. I know these kids better. And so it's been a neat way for us to build relationships. And then they'll give me feedback. They'll actually kind of come in with like a little Danielson rubric and they really enjoy giving me the feedback about how I could deliver the lesson better to be successful for the kids. That is so awesome. Tell us how our listeners could do those same things that you're doing in your school those exciting things for kids what are some ways that you think a school leader can do those cool things I have a three-step process listen listen what's going on what are some things that you're passionate about what your your teachers are passionate about ask them what do you think about this get that feedback from the stakeholders learn I connect with people on Voxer and Twitter and blogs, and I learn about how other people are doing this so I don't reinvent the wheel, and then I lead. I just take it and go forward. But if I don't build from that foundation, I go out in isolation, and I don't have that buy-in that we need to make everything successful. Now, we live busy lives as school leaders, right? I mean, Absolutely. And how do you manage all that, living a busy life of being a school leader? I I love journaling and reflecting, and, and my blog is Principle in Balance, and I feel like I love this work and I love what I do, but honestly, I love my family more. Mm. And I gotta learn to love myself and take care of myself so then I can continue to do this work because otherwise as teachers and administrators, we're in this for the long haul and if we can't take care of ourselves and find things to fill ourselves up outside of the day, we're not gonna be able to make it and make it good for kids. I so agree with you. And how can people find your blog and find more about you? Well, I'm on Twitter as at Jessica Cabeen, C-A-B-E-E-N. And if you just Google, uh, Principle and Balance on WordPress. That's my blog. And I'm on Boxer as Jessica Cabine too. But I love learning tips and tricks on how to stay balanced, how to like have a life outside of what you do. And one of my favorite things is I lead where I live. I'm in a community of 20,000 people. I can't get through the grocery store without saying hi to about 100 people. Mm -hmm. But it's just, it fills my cup up to be part of a community and a school system that's so supportive for kids. I love that. I, I lead where I live. That's powerful. And uh, what a great message for our school leaders. Hey, one tip, if you had to give new school leaders, you know, up and coming, ones that just got into being a school leader, what would you tell them as you look back on your experience? What would you tell them to be successful? Okay, it's not about the title. Lead from your feet, not in your seat. First hour of every day, be out greeting kids, greeting families, be out in the classrooms. The email will always be there. Trust me, it fills up. You don't have to be answering everything. Who's your priority? What's your purpose? And that's where you put your time. Awesome. Jess, it's been great to have you on Lead the Way. Honor, 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 honor. Thank you. Thank you.
You've been listening to Dr. Bill Ziegler with Lead the Way. If you'd like information about Bill's book, Future Focused Leaders, go to chaselearning.org. That's chaselearning.org. This has been a presentation of Lead the Way with Dr. Bill Ziegler. Thank you.